Hi everybody, Todd Peterson here. I wanted to take just a few minutes and, and tell you a few things about our new IO550 engine upgrade for all 1962 through 1986 Cessna 182s. We came out with this new upgrade to deal with some of the issues our customers had up in the mountains. They, they were flying heavy weights at a high density altitude strips and they just needed a little more power than our tried and true fuel injected 260 horse engine could give them. So consequently we came out with this and face it, you know, anybody that wants an engine upgrade, man, you want more power. Power is safety, power is performance. So we certified the IO550, which is the biggest piston engine, cubic inch engine Continental makes. And in doing so, we were fortunate enough to be able to look at some of the other 52550 conversions out there, see what the issues were, and kind of design our installation away from those issues, deal with those issues. The first thing that we looked at very carefully that, that I just hadn't been able to figure out for quite a while how to deal with was the weight increase of the bigger engine and prop on the nose. As we all know, Skylanes are nose heavy to begin with. They bang up a lot of nose gears and it's just a fact of life. Uh, the empty weight CG is right at the forward end of the envelope. So consequently, when we came up with this design, we came up with a design that compensated for that extra weight on the nose between the engine and the propeller. Now, on some Skylanes, the installation of the IO550 with, a, with this big three-bladed prop adds up to 50 pounds of weight. Well, obviously you can't just slam 50 pounds of weight on the nose of a Skylane without compensating for that somehow and expect it to fly right. The slow speed flight characteristics are going to be poor. Landing, flare, it's all going to be bad. So we really took a lot of time and dealt with that issue. What we came out with was an IO550 installation where the CG after the IO550 has been installed is actually back slightly from what it was to begin with. So the airplane with the 550 now will fly better at slow speed and on landing than it did with the 230, which is very, very unusual. Another thing we looked at that we could see out there was that the, some of the 520s and 550s had some real vibration issues. I talked to some tech reps at some of the Cessna owner, um, organizations that are out there, and some of the vibration issues have been bad enough where rivets in the tail were starting to loosen and smoke, and I, I couldn't have that. And they said it doesn't happen all the time, maybe 20 or 30 percent of the time, but we wanted something that was turbine smooth every time. The engineers at Macaulay worked really hard with us. We came out with an engine prop combination that's absolutely turbine smooth. Uh, they, we certified uh, the 82 and the 86 inch prop links both. Now some of, the, some of the other conversions out there that have these vibration issues have come out with a heavy duty engine mount, which helps. It, it takes the vibration and it isolates it more from the airframe. The problem is is that everything attached to the engine, like the baffling, the exhaust, the spinner bulkhead, everything, everything still continues to have that vibration and wear. So that to me seemed like a real band-aid approach. What we wanted was something that was basically smooth to begin with, and that's what we got. Another issue that I saw out there that I wanted to work around was that of a flap restriction. Some of the engine upgrades out there have a flap restriction, and, and our fellows, a lot of them fly in the backcountry, and they need all the flaps they can get to come in over steep obstacles down the bottom of canyons. So the conversion we came up with has no flap restrictions whatsoever. We got, we got away from that also. In looking around, I'd seen some of the conversions out there that had modified parts of the induction system designed for a carburetor to fit a fuel-injected engine. I didn't like that. Like the 260-horse engine we've, we've built for years and years and years, Everything on this installation is designed around a fuel-injected engine. There's nothing from the carbureted engine that we've got that we've tried to change into something we can bolt up into a fuel-injected engine. It's all designed front to back for a fuel-injected engine, very, very similar to the Cessna 185 Skywagon, which is a great machine. Another thing that I saw out there was, and a lot of people don't know this, but if your boost pump quits, you have no way to prime the engine. You can't get the engine started with an inoperative boost pump. And immediately I thought, now who'd want to be out in the middle of nowhere and have either walk off, leave the master on, have, the, have no battery, or have a boost pump fail and be stuck? So we're the only ones that came out with a manual priming system that allows you to start the engine um, with a boost pump that's inoperative, or if you've got two and you can hand prop it, you can do that too. So I'm, I'm real happy with the safety aspect of that. We also looked around, and very briefly I thought, well, why don't we just do a 550 with a carburetor? But we found out a long time ago that a fuel-injected engine pulls about two inches more manifold pressure than its carbureted counterpart, which is a lot of power. You go up to altitude or on takeoff, you throttle back two inches, that's a, that's a big reduction in power. 
So what we wanted was maximum power. That's why we're doing it. So we stayed with the fuel-injected engine for maximum power. The other thing the fuel-injected engine gives us that's really nice is greater fuel efficiency. Now the IO550 is a pretty thirsty motor uh, at high power settings rich at peak. It's burning about 18 and a half, maybe 19 gallons an hour. Um, with an engine that's set up properly, we can take that 19 gallons an hour fuel consumption, knock it down to 12.8, 13, 14 gallons an hour lean a peak, and it only costs us four or five knots of cruise speed. So you can, the efficiency of a fuel injected engine when it's properly set up is great. And nobody minds running around at, at like I do with this, at 12.8 gallons an hour. So the fuel efficiency is much better. We get rid of the carburetor ice issue. Um, there's just nothing on this engine that we haven't addressed in terms of problems that we've seen in the field. And face it, like I said, we're all doing this for safety when we want lots of power. Hope to see you in the future. Take care. Bye-bye.